this is Shell C from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm going to share with you one of my mixed media canvases. It's in the style of what I call paper painting which is using small pieces of paper to create an image and using that paper to shade and highlight and the whole thing. Um, this is not a tutorial. A lot of this is cut out. This, these type of projects take me days not hours. <laughs> so to make this even into this 30 minutes long, um, many things were cut out, but you'll get the idea of how I do this. Normally I would collage the entire background, but I decided instead, since I was going to make a water image, that I wanted to use this technique that I've seen several different places. The first time I saw it was on a YouTube video with a guy, and I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. It was a long time ago. And I thought it was really cool and I tried it a little bit, but then I didn't really do that much with it. Then I saw it again, my friend who's an artist, Vicki Ross, I think she saw the same video that I did. And then she got into doing this technique and she made this fantastic pumpkin painting. I think it was last fall sometime maybe, or it might've been a year ago, but I just loved the painting and, and she did this technique in several layers which is what I'm going to do, um, you know, do it, dry it, do it again, dry it. And believe me, if I had the $350 that she was asking, I think <laughs> that's how much it was for that painting, I would have bought it. It was beautiful. It just, it looked like a real pumpkin with all the variations of how the yellows and reds and oranges on a pumpkin look. So cool. Then uh, recently, Cat Hand here on YouTube, she's doing mixed media morsels. And if, if you like mixed media, you should probably check that out. It's a really cool series she's doing. And she did this technique as one of her backgrounds. She just did one layer of it. But it makes a really cool quick background. And all it is is just using watered down acrylic paint. And uh, mine is 91% alcohol, uh, a high level of rubbing alcohol. And dripping it on there and that separates the pigments and makes these little splotches which to me look like water it looks like you know an under underwater type situation so what I wanted on mine was to have it start in the lower right hand corner dark and then get lighter towards the top so that's what you'll see me attempting to do and I do it you know, I, I, I let it dry overnight. I do it many, many times. And so I probably have cut out. No, I don't think I cut out any of this. I just sped it up really a lot. Just so you could see the process of how the background came to be. I'm using DecoArt's uh, Fluid Media line acrylics right now. And I thought since they were already fluid that I really wouldn't need to water them down that much or at all actually. I, at first I thought at all because they're liquid so why would I need to water them but I did still need to water them so I um, you'll see me spraying the canvas and then applying the paint and then putting the alcohol on with my uh, pipette and I've got my alcohol there in that sealed container um, Rubbermaid thingy and then doing the next layer you know, and like do, doing it that way is how I'm doing it at this point. And I just, I just want blues and greens as if sun was shining down through the water. If any of you've snorkeled or sw swam, you know, in a natural, even in a pool actually, you can see those, those rays of the, the light coming down through the water. And I think that's really beautiful. And that was the effect I was trying to get. So I let this dry for a long time and then I came back and now I've got the Liquitex Basics heavy, well heavier body paint. It's kind of like a medium body. It's not super heavy and I'm using that watered down and I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm like trying to lighten up and unify because you know I've got very definite stripes going on there and I don't want those. I want it to be more blended. So I'm using a different paint same technique basically it works with any 
acrylic paint, even, you know, craft paints, it works as well. You just have to give them a lot of water. And I'm drying it in between and applying another layer and drying and applying another layer. So this hat probably has, by the end, I don't know, maybe 10 layers. Just trying to get a good depth, trying to get a good modeled appearance. <laughs> and I end up doing other stuff to it as well at the end. I don't just leave it like this. But, but this was the basic technique that I was trying to do. I wish that I could show you some of my other canvases that are done with paper painting because I really it's it's really a favorite of mine I, you know I've, if any of you watch me you've heard me say I love to glue paper to stuff I really do and I've made a lot of these canvases in a lot of different uh, you know different I mean I've, I've done them on commission I've made a vampire I've made a lighthouse I've made all different types of stuff I've made the Palouse County fields I've made so many different ones and um, this is the first time that I've ever done a painted background with a collage on the top. I generally collage the entire canvas, which takes me days. But um, this was a gift, and I needed to get it done. And besides, I wanted to, to do it with this technique. So that's why I did it this way. And I love the way it turned out. I think it's great. So I'll probably continue to do this. And this is this is almost like a shortcut, being able to paint the backgrounds. Um, a hero of mine named uh, Elizabeth St. Hilaire, she does paper painting, and she does a lot of the, her backgrounds now, I've noticed, with acrylic paint. And she does drippage and splatters. And then she will uh, collage on like a, a little bird or something like that. She does animals. She does all kinds of really cool stuff. The next one that I'm going to do like this is going to be a sea turtle. That's my plan if I ever get around to it. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll make a video. It's it's uh, it's just not a short process. It's just not something that's easy to show in a video because people don't want to sit and watch a four hour, or six hour, or eight hour process. So now at this point I'm just kind of adding different colors and I'm kind of I'm I'm not sticking completely with the the um, round looking splotches I'm kind of altering them with the brush you can see at the top I think it kind of looks like sea foam that's the reason that I picked this color and then I splatter with the brush and I'm like kind of daubing with a, a baby wipe and trying to get an interesting effect I just wanted a lot of different colors, a lot of different layers of colors, a lot of depth. And I dried in between, that's why there was a split there. And now I've got some uh, bubble wrap, and I'm just going to make some bubble wrap marks by dipping it in the paint and using it kind of like a stamp. Because it looks like bubbles, because it's bubble wrap. Ha ha! <laughs> I know I'm silly it's okay so I started with the lighter color at the top and then I'm going to put a darker color at the bottom and then a medium color in the medium wait in the middle <laughs> bubble wrap's pretty cool I probably should have went and got some larger size bubble wrap too and done both sizes but I don't know where the larger size is. It was probably downstairs, maybe. So I think this makes a little bit more interest on the background because it's smaller and um, there's more activity going on now with this. And then I've got some different size. This is a pill bottle, you know, a prescription bottle. And I'm just making some bubbles, some actual, you know, bubble looking things by dipping the circular thing in the paint and using that like a stamp. This is pretty fun to do if you have a toilet paper roll. 
but I wanted them to be slightly smaller so I've got a pill bottle and then this is the lid to my water sprayer for the smaller one and then this teeny tiny one I can't even remember what it is oh the lid to a pin I think maybe I'm not sure but I clean all those up okay now this is the background it's complete and dry and I'm ready to um, put on my underpainting. When I do a collage I generally do an underpainting because it gives me an idea without thinking so hard about where the the shadows and highlights are, where the shapes are that I'm going to collage and also it if, if there's some holes in the collage you know if I don't cover every single solitary millimeter of the ca of the canvas with a piece of paper it still fill looks like it's filled in does that make sense because there's paint underneath in a similar color so I've already sketched out my image you saw that that white piece of scratch paper that I've sketched my octopus and now I'm just drawing it onto the canvas using pastel pencil um, I have a new set of pastel pencils that are made by Derwent and I really like them for this I used to do it with pencil with like a graphite pencil and it was kinda hard to see I switched to a lighter color because I knew I was filming and I figured you guys would want to see it <laughs> that first one that I was using didn't really show up on the the video screen which I didn't notice until I looked over to the TV to see what it looked like so now I'm using a white color so you can see the drawing and I've also sped it up to eight times speed trying to get keep this down under 30 minutes if I can I know you won't watch all 30 minutes I know you guys are gonna watch about 10 minutes you're gonna you're gonna scooch the little bar forward because that's what I would do and that is what I do <laughs> because I have I don't have patience to sit and watch everything every single thing so my rule for myself is to try to make it 20 minutes and if it's something really long 30 minutes is my absolute limit so since this one was probably I don't know eight or ten hours 30 minutes is pretty good <laughs> so you can see me with the baby wipe kind of erasing lines and refining my image as I'm going because it's just acrylic paint that baby wipe wipes that pastel right off so and also you can see me sometimes counting is there eight legs is there eight legs I know that every person that looks at this piece of art and sees it's an octopus is gonna count the legs that is the first thing you're gonna do is to count and see if there's eight legs so I made sure that there was <laughs> I know people I know how they work <laughs> so now I've just got some different acrylic paints uh, red orange yellow white and I'm just going to do a very quick and dirty underpainting and I'm not even gonna make you watch the whole thing I'm gonna cut some of it out it's it's messy it's streaky it's not meant to be something that's seen it's just putting the colors where I think I'm going to put the colors with the papers and kind of giving me an idea of shadows and highlights I've only seen an octopus maybe maybe three times in my life um, at Seaside Oregon there is a place I used to go as a child and it's a an aquarium I guess I guess they call it an aquarium and they have sea lions you can feed and they you can buy the the uh, fish and feed the sea lions and it makes your hands smell stinky for days and they had an octopus in there and it was it was in a like a low tank without a lid so you could bend over and see it and um, my friend's grandfather I don't think you're supposed to do this but he used to touch it I don't I, I wouldn't think they'd want you to touch it I don't remember I was a child but anyway it would um, wrap its little tentacle around his finger and stuff like that and then I've seen them uh, in another place at the Oregon Coast. I like to go to the Oregon Coast for vacation 
I, I really, I miss water. I live in Arizona, so I miss water. So I really, really like to go to that very beautiful coast. It's, it's so scenic and I like to take pictures and make paintings and stuff when I'm there. But I, we went to another bigger aquarium that's somewhere a lot more south of Seaside. It's maybe Newport. I don't know, but they had octopus and they were in enclosed tanks and tall so that that if they moved you could watch them move the way that they move is very interesting it's uh, very sinuous how they kind of wave their arms or legs or whatever you want to call them back and forth to push themselves in the water they also had some really really beautiful um, jellyfish like neon colored jellyfish gorgeous creatures they were like neon pink and I have a photo somewhere of those but so I guess I should explain what I did here this isn't something I always do but this seemed smart at the time and it actually worked out great because I wasn't doing the entire background I decided that I would do the shapes on deli paper so I took deli paper and drew around one of the legs of the octopus with a pencil and then I'm just going to do my paper collage right onto the deli paper. It's very thin so there's no way that you would ever know that there's a, a layer of deli paper in between the canvas and the collage. So this is kind of my little secret technique that I'm sharing with you. It's a secret, don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's something that I came up with on my own um, when trying to do, I was actually doing a uh, uh, kind of an abstract Interact with a lot of geometric shapes like circles and triangles and things like that um, and I was having trouble making straight lines and curved lines and so that's when I first decided that I could do it on deli paper and then cut it out and it worked and now I like doing it this way sometimes sometimes I do it my normal way but in this case since there's not going to be any paper butting up the up against this edge that needs to be matched this technique worked really great for this and I ended up doing I think the whole piece this way I'm using DecoArt's satin deco page glue for this and my old beat up glue brush and now I know this is mostly off screen but I'm just uh, fussy cutting out this piece from the back because I can see the pencil lines from the back and there you have a tentacle or a leg or whatever you want to call it and you can see that I've done the the highlights and shadows with the colors different colors of paper I have uh, plastic boxes full of scraps of paper some of its painted paper some of its uh, jelly prints some of its I don't know just pieces occasionally I use scrap of paper just I just don't ever throw anything away when I have little leftover pieces of things I just sort them into colors and I have them in plastic boxes on a shelf I call them my color boxes and I'm actually about running out of reds and oranges and yellows now <laughs> so I'm gonna need to find some more I was uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel by the end of this project so I didn't want to paint any paper I just wanted to get it done because I needed to get it done because I needed to get it in the mail and so I was a little bit desperate so I cut a lot of that out I just cut a whole bunch of it out but I didn't figure you needed to see the same thing over and over and over <laughs> so now I've got his legs about done and I've done other sections completely completed other sections just giving myself an idea of what I'm going to do um, usually for all the little I guess I would call them suckers on the legs I would do those all with paper but because I was running out of time I decided to just do them with paint so you'll see them do me doing it in a minute because I just did not have time to tear all that paper and make those little tiny um, circular type shapes I literally was doing this late at night on the very last second that I could before I needed to get it um, sent so 
I just was running out of time. I'm sure you've all been there. I don't think not doing it with paper made any difference at all. I think it looks great. So I don't feel like I cheated the person who received it. <laughs> it's mixed media. I mixed the medias. I'm always mixing up all those medias. <laughs> So I'm doing his uh, face. Do octopuses have faces? I guess so. His head. The place where all his legs meet? I don't know. I'm not sure what to call it. <laughs> but it has a couple um, places where water goes in and and I guess that's how they breathe. Somehow they take the oxygen out of the water, I guess. I'm not sure. But. That's what I'm leaving blank there. And I'm going to put some darker paper in it. And I'm also making a darker line and then a lighter line. It's kind of hard to see, but so that the shape is more defined. I believe this is sped up to eight times fast. I wish I could do it this fast. Hey, you saw one of my color boxes. This thing over to the right is my sorting tray that I use when I do collage. I sort my colors. So it had yellow, orange, and red at one point, but now it just looks like it's got some stuff thrown on the top of it. When I'm sorting my paper, sometimes it has multiple colors and I just have to decide, is it more yellow or is it more red or is it you know, <laughs> none of it is completely one solid color. I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you are enjoying it, and if you think that this is, uh, an interesting video that you might want to see more of something like this at some point then please leave me a comment and subscribe so that you don't miss anything and of course please like because that tells YouTube that I'm making something valuable that people want to see and then they tell other people about it and they they offer this video to other people who are watching something else that's similar and then that way my channel will grow. So if you want to help me out, please do those things. Subscribe, like, comment, and of course share. If you think it's really something someone that you know would like to see, then by all means give them the link. Share it. Okay, so now I've cut out his face and I'm going to put it there. And then to, to um, cover the seam so that it doesn't look like it's two separate pieces, or well, <laughs> eight separate pieces attaching to one separate piece, I'll be putting more papers on to blend everything in. And then that's about it. That's all there is to it. Well, for this part anyway. Then I have to dry it. Then there's a lot more to it after this. So see how I'm making a darker line blending into that top leg to give a little bit of definition there by using a darker color. And then I'm making a line right there separating that leg by using the orange to give the shapes more definition. While also blending that piece into the other piece. Now the collage is done, and once this is dry, actually I don't even think I wait till it's dry. <laughs> I'm going to put some more of those uh, sucker shapes on using the titanium white paint. And I'm using the back of my paintbrush and tapping it on that way 
it gives it a mostly circular shape if you do that. If I was to use the front of the paintbrush, then I would have to actually draw a circle with the bristles. So this works out pretty well. I can still also kind of draw with it. Um, when I get down to the bottom, the circles need to be bigger. And so I just, you know, make my kind of a circular shape using the tip there. Oh, little highlight for his eye. These are the ones I'm talking about. They need to be bigger because they're closer. And I cut some of that out so you didn't have to watch that anymore. Now I've got my Pit Brush Artist Pen. This is India ink and I'm going to do all the shading using it and then because I've covered the entire canvas with the, mo with the decoupage glue to seal everything as I was collaging, I was also sealing the background. Um, it allows me a couple seconds because it's a non-porous surface, the India ink isn't soaking in. So while it's still wet, I can blend it. So you see me draw the line and then go back with my finger and blend and draw and blend and draw and blend. And that's something that's pretty cool about this ink because when it is dry, it won't move anymore because it's India ink. That's a very permanent ink. But on a non-porous -por surface that's been sealed like this, you can blend it slightly. So that's the reason I'm using this. I could also use my Stavillo All pencil or my Derwent Ink Tense pencils and then blend that with a water brush or a paintbrush with water. But that would take a little bit longer. It might it would give a pretty cool effect, but then I would also have to seal it. And as I was telling you before, I was in a super hurry. I needed to get this thing done. So I didn't have time to seal it. Um, all I did was put a layer of uh, beeswax. I used Daddy Van's furniture, the natural furniture polish wax. Um, I learned about that on YouTube. You sh sure learn a lot of stuff on YouTube. Um, so I ordered some of that. It's a natural product. It smells good. And um, I can seal something like this with that because then it stops the glue from being sticky so that it doesn't stick to anything. Gives a little bit of a sheen and uh, doesn't smell stinky like some of the other products that I sometimes use to seal. And also there's no drying time, which was important in this case. <laughs> I needed to get done. I needed to get done. So I'm going around each little sucker and then I'm also putting a little dot in the middle because I think that's what suckers look like. What I wonder what those things are really called, not suckers. But I don't know. <laughs> Suction cups, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, we're about done. So the close-ups are coming and I'll play music during those. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.